This course will take you from a complete novice around the sewing machine to knowing your way around a sewing machine. At the end of this course, you will be able to drive your sewing machine, learn how to thread your sewing machine, and sew simple straight stitches. As with learning a new skill, practice is paramount. Some parts of this course will include some resources that you can download, like PDF, that you can practice to improve your skills in the sewing journey. Why do you want to sew? Sewing is a creative expression. Sewing starts in the mind and it brings out a creation of what your imagination has made. It's taking a piece of fabric and transform it in into something fabulous. Thinking something that is plain fabric, 2D dimension, and turning into something 3D dimension. Different people start this journey of learning to sew for different reasons. Some to express their own uniqueness. Some as a step into a career in fashion designing. Some to mend clothing items for families and friends. Whatever your reasons for starting this journey, our aim here at Sew Everything is to help you build the skills you need to fulfill this dream. The lessons at Sew Everything is broken down into simple steps to help achieve basic sewing skills quickly. And we would build on these skills to a professional proficiency. So, let's get started. Let the needle hit the fabric. Now, what type of sewing machine would you buy? Or what type of sewing machine should you buy? This is the most frequent question I get in my beginner's class. Get a basic sewing machine. It does not need to be a computerized machine, just a basic machine without any frills or bells or whistles. One thing to note though is all domestic sewing machines falls into two categories the front loading bobbin sewing machine the bobbin is loaded in the front panel of the sewing machine most beginners and especially children find this sewing machine a little bit difficult to master the other category of sewing machine is the drop-in bobbin sewing machine the bobbin is simply dropped into the top panel of the sewing arm of the sewing machine. Beginners and children find this machine quicker to master. There are no rules to the type of sewing machine you should get, but my own recommendation will be the drop-in bobbin sewing machine. Look out for reviews online before buying your sewing machine. Amazon is a good place to get reviews. However, I would recommend getting your sewing machine in a store after you are satisfied with the review and research you have done. Here are some brands of sewing machine that I have worked with in the past. Let's look at the basic tools and supplies you will need to have in your sewing box. A scissors. A good pair of scissors is essential in your sewing box. When you get your scissors, please label it as your fabric scissors. Let everyone at home know this is your fabric scissors. It should not be used to cut paper or anything else. Paper dulls the sharpness of the scissors and then when it's time for you to cut fabric, that scissors doesn't serve you its purpose. So label your fabric scissors and use it only for fabric. This scissors should be made of stainless steel and it should be at least 8 inches long. Another item you need in your sewing box is a seam ripper. A seam ripper is used to take out unwanted stitches. For example, you're sewing and you find out that, oh, I've made a mistake. And you need to get those stitches out of your fabric. 
A seam ripper is what you will use to unpick your stitches out of the fabric. Be careful around the seam ripper, it is very sharp. Other items you will need are pins and pin cushions. When getting pins, get pins with colorful heads. This will help you in searching out the pins if you accidentally drop them on the floor. And the pin cushion is where you put, you put your pin in when you're not using it. You will need needles. You will need both the hand needle and the sewing machine needle. They all come in different sizes, but as you go along this journey, you will know the type of needles for the type of jobs. Taylor's chalk. We use the Taylor's chalk in marking out patterns on our fabric or drawing out a design that we want to cut out or sew stitches on. This is a non-permanent chalk, so dusting it away or using water will remove the chalk from the fabric. Another essential tool is the tracing paper and the tracing wheel. The tracing paper is used to transfer uh, patterns onto your fabric and the tracing wheel is like your pen that actually draws or trace the pattern from maybe a purple pattern even onto your fabric. You will need also a tape measure and a ruler, preferably a transparent ruler in drawing and measuring. You will need an iron and an ironing board. While sewing, there's a lot of pressing and ironing that goes on to help us make our garments look professional when they are finished. These are the basic supplies you need in your sewing box. It's time to eat the shops. Sewing machine safety. In this lecture, we will talk about sewing machine safety, the danger zone. You're probably wondering, sewing machine and danger zone. The danger zone on your sewing machine is the part that leads to the needle in your sewing machine. As you're sewing uh, and the dog feet is taking your fabric, the parts that where the needles hit the fabric and goes into your fabric, the part to the needle is the danger zone. And the most important rule is keep your fingers away from the danger zone. As you sew, the fabric moves along the machine towards the needle. So if your finger is on the part of the needle, there's definitely going to be an incident between the needle and your finger. So as you sew, place your hands on either side of your fabric and just guide your fabric. When you're sewing, tie up your hair to the back or tie it up just make sure it's out of the way of the sewing path. If for any reason you have ties and scarves on, remove that before you start sewing. Turn off your sewing machine when you finish sewing so that no other person accidentally presses on it and it starts stitching. Turn off your sewing machine when you're treading your machine or when you're changing the bobbin. What you have learned so far is how to pick a sewing machine, the basic sewing machine supplies you need, and sewing machine safety. Now, it's time for you to get to know your sewing machine, parts of the sewing machine and their functions. When I resumed sewing over 12 years ago, I christened my new sewing machine Dockers. And as it is with every new friend, it's time for you to get to know what makes up your sewing machine. Feel free to give your sewing machine a name. Your sewing machine would come with a manual. Get acquainted with it and place it in your sewing box for a quick reference. Here are the basic parts of a sewing machine. Your sewing machine may have additional features or look a bit different. What you need to do is look at the names here 
with the image on your sewing machine manual and on your sewing machine as well. First, we'll start with the bobbin. The bobbin, it holds the thread that comes from inside the machine, sometimes known as the lower thread or the bobbin thread. We have the bobbin case. This is the case that the bobbin sits in before it is loaded into the sewing machine. Note that you would only have a bobbin case if your sewing machine is a front-loading bobbin sewing machine. Bobbin winder spindle. This is where the bobbin is placed in order to wind thread around the bobbin. The bobbin winder stopper. This is a stopper on your machine that stops the bobbin winding more thread on the bobbin when the bobbin has reached its maximum capacity. The bobbin winder thread guide. This is a tiny disc on your machine that guides the thread while you're winding the bobbin. The needle. The thread passes into the needle, which is used for making stitches. The needle clamp screw is used to secure the needle to the sewing machine. The thread guide. The thread guide shows you the sequence of passing the thread from the spool of thread on the top of your machine through the machine and into the eye of the needle. Thread take up lever. The thread passes through this lever while you're threading your sewing machine. Thread tension dial. This controls the tension on the thread that is coming from the thread spool. If the bobbin thread appears on the right side of your fabric, then the tension is too tight. Or if the needle thread loops on the underside of your fabric, then the tension is too loose. The tension dial, the thread tension dial is what you use to adjust this. Dog feed. The dog feed pulls the fabric forward while sewing, thereby feeding the fabric into the sewing machine. Spool pin. The spool pin holds the spool of thread in order to feed the thread into the eye of the needle, also known as the top thread. The balance wheel. This is the knob you will use to drive your machine manually. Turn the balance wheel towards yourself. You can see the needle goes up and down. Stitch width down. This is used to set the width of your stitch. Stitch length down. This sets the length of the stitch. When you're sewing fine fabrics like silk, shorter stitches are used, so you need a short stitch length. But while sewing heavier fabrics like denim, longer stitches are used. Stitch type dial. Used to select the pattern of stitch you intend to sew. Different machine comes with different patterns. Now is a good time to check the different stitch pattern on your sewing machine. This machine has straight stitches, zigzag stitches, and they are labeled A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Your machine may have a different way the stitches have been labeled. Reverse lever. You press this lever or button if you want the machine to sew backwards. This lever is normally used when starting or finishing your stitches. Presser foot. This is the standard foot for all sewing machines and is used for general sewing. As you go along in your sewing journey, you will be introduced to additional feet that you can fit into your machine to sew different types of stitches. The press foot lifter. This raises or lowers your presser foot. You will normally raise the presser foot when you want to change the, to a different type of foot or when you're placing your fabric on the sewing machine or removing your fabric from the sewing machine. Foot pedal. This controls the speed of the sewing machine. 
the harder you press the pedal the faster your sewing machine runs press your pedal with cushion power supply connect the power cable of your sewing machine into your machine and connect the other end to your power socket on the wall hit the switch button on your sewing machine and your sewing machine is ready to be driven welcome to today's sewing class in this section we are going to see how to drive our machines i've attached um, some pdf documents to this video where you can start to sew, uh, to sew your stitches either straight zigzag and cuff stitch um so we'll see how i'm going to place stitches we would select even from the patterns on my sewing machine the letter a is for straight stitches so i moved the dial switch to a and i want a length of two in the machine turn the wheel balance to pull the needles towards me and it goes straight in to the paper so the next thing i'll do is i will lower the dog feed i will switch on my sewing machine And before I press the dog feed, I'll make sure my hands are on either side of the danger zone. Where the needle hits the fabric is the danger zone. We don't want our fingers there because we don't want an accident with, our, with the needle. So I'm going to drive the machine now and I'm, just, I'm not going to be pushing the fabric, but I'll just be guiding it. And then when I reach the end of the line that I want to sew the straight stitch on, I take the wheel balance and turn the needle so that it's in the uppermost position. I raise my dog feet and I take my fabric out of the machine. The other PDF attached to this video is teaching us how to sew and turn points because when we're sewing, we're going to be turning corners. And in order to turn corners, this is a, a practice for a, a, a page. So you place the zigzag practice, you place it on your machine, and you make sure you're sewing in a straight line. So you align, you guide your fabric, and then you take your wheel balance and pull down your needle into the fabric. When your needle has, is in the fabric, lower the dog feed, and then sew along the line. When you hit the point where when you hit the point where you want to turn the fabric at the corner, make sure your needle is down into the fabric. Lift up your dog feet. Manipulate your fabric to the way you want to sew it. Now I want to sew the line down this way. I'll lower the dog feet. And then I'll start sewing straight stitches. Okay, and I'm going to gently pull, bring down the needle. I'm using my wheel balance to do this to make sure the needle is in the fabric. I lift up the dog feet and manipulate my fabric or paper as we're working with paper right now until I'm sewing in a straight line. And then I lower the dog feet and I continue sewing. And I'll repeat this till I get to the very end of the stitches I'm making. So when you're sewing, you're able to sew corners and turn corners without taking the old fabric out of your sewing machine. Make sure the needle is in the fabric. Raise the dog feet, manipulate the fabric. Lower the dog feed, sew onto the point you want. The needle is in the fabric. Dog feed up, manipulate your fabric, um, dog feed down, and sew to the end. And when you finish, 
you make sure your needle is in the topmost position raise your dog feet on color as well sewing okay so we're going to do one of these curves now and um, the needle is in the topmost position the dog feet is raised I place my fabric or the paper practice paper on the machine I lower my needle into the fabric I lower the dog feet and make sure my hands are on either side of the sewing of the danger zone and while you're sewing curve you need to be slow in order to guide the fabric um, faster um, it's not a, a race so you slow at your convenience and, and here I'm just manipulating the fabric in order to get the curve and it's almost as if I am sewing In this video, we are going to load the bobbin. In order to sew, we need a thread that goes to the bottom or inside the machine and that's the bobbin thread. This is the bobbin. This is the spool of thread that we have and we're going to transfer the thread from the spool of thread onto the bobbin and we'll load that into the machine. Okay, I'm going to pull the pin up. I'm going to place my thread. And I'm going to place the thread. I'm going to follow the guide. This guide is for both loading the bobbin. I'm going to pull the thread gently. And I'm going to slot um, the thread into one of the holes in the sewing machine. Uh, into one of the holes in the bobbin. And then I'll make sure I'm holding the tail of it. I'll place the bobbin on the spindle. I'll place the bobbin on the spindle. I would push the spindle towards the stopper. This is the bobbin spindle. This is the stopper. Okay. I will I pull would, out the um, wheel balance because that's the way this machine works. I'll make sure the machine is switched on. While holding the tail of the bobbin thread, I'll switch in the machine and I'll press the foot pedal. And you will know that the thread is being transferred from the bobbin, from the spool thread to the bobbin. So we're going to load um, some thread onto the bobbin. You can slip away this thread, the tail. And then I've loaded the bobbin I need for this project. I switch off my machine. Push in the wind balance. I push the bobbin spindle back in place and I take my bobbin out. At this point, I need to cut the bobbin. So we have the bobbin loaded with some thread. And now, because this. is a front loading machine we're going to load the bobbin into the sewing machine so the first thing we do is we remove the arm extension we flip open the bobbin I'll see, and we take the bobbin case out if you look at this bobbin case you will notice that it's like a letter Q it has a circle and a small tail and our bobbin when loaded with thread is also like a letter Q. It's round and it has a tail. So the easiest way of doing this is all the bobbin case on the left end and all the bobbin with a tray. The tails should be opposite each other. So the tail of the bobbin case is facing this way, it's facing the left, and the tail 
of the bobbin itself is on the right and then you just drop the bobbin in the bobbin case take this um, till pass it through the hooks the guide there the thread guide and into yeah so you can see that the bob the thread is being released from the bobbin case easily now we're going to load the bobbin into the sewing machine um if you look at where the bobbin sits here there is um i'm just going to use the scissors to point there is a, a till here a till slot where this notch goes into and so you place your bobbin into the case make sure the tail is aligned to the snotch lift up the lever here and your bobbin sits easily in its case there then tuck in the rest of the tail of the thread fold the flap and connect and put the extension back now this is the first part of um loading the bobbin thread when we thread the needle we would pull out the bobbin thread so that the thread comes out of the machine in order to thread our machine we're going to be following the thread part. Um, different machine has different width in which they're threaded. Just check the manual on your sewing machine. Um, the thread part here points here and it points to number one here. And then it points to number two here. Then it goes back to number three here. And then it goes back to number four just at the bottom of here. So and now we're going to start. We take the thread and we go through number one first. And when we take the thread to number one, we trick it through the hook in number two. And this is the thread lever upper. And we take it through number three. It goes through there. It goes through the loop there. And then... And then we take it through number four, which is this hook here. And so we have the thread. Now, in order to thread the needle, we go from the front to the back. Uh, in order to give myself a lot of access here, I'll lower my dog feet for now. And I'll pass the thread through the eye of the needle from the front to the back. And that is is my needle threaded and then I'll lift up the dog feed and that is the needle threaded now in order to bring up the bobbin thread from the front loading machine um, what you need to do now is hold the tail of the thread in your left hand take the wheel balance and turn it towards you you see that your needle is going down your needle is going down and you turn it all the way back up to make one complete revolution and if you tug at the thread on your hand you would see you would notice that there is a second thread here that is the bobbin thread which the top thread has, has picked up by taking the needle down to bring out the bobbin thread and so to start sewing we have a top thread and we have a bobbin thread and then just pass your thread to the back of your machine just pass it through the presser foot here just pass your thread to the back of the machine and then you are ready to sew Now we're going to practice um, the stitches, the straight, the pivoting. That's when we're turning corners and sewing a curve on a curve edge. We're going to practice that now that we've had our machine loaded with the top thread 
and the bobbin thread is how we have two threads coming out so i've taken a scrap feet of fabric here and with my tailor's jerk i have made a straight line and we're going to sew straight along this line what you need to do is your needle need to be in the topmost position place your fabric in the on the sewing machine lower the needle into the fabric drop your dog feet and then switch on your machine and then press the foot pedal and you're sewing your straight stitch just use your hands to guide the fabric to make sure you're sewing in a straight line and when I finish sewing I make sure the needle is in the topmost position I lift up the dog field I pull out my fabric and I snip it off snip off the dry there we have the straight stitch sewed okay now we're going to try and sew and turn uh, that is pivot so we take another scrap fifth of fabric i've used the tailor's chalk to draw straight line and i've made corners wherein we are going to turn the fabric so making sure i have enough thread at the back here i place the fabric to sew a straight line i lower my needle into i lower my needle into this fabric i drop the dog feed and make sure my machine is on and then the press the foot pedal when I want to when I get to the corner I want to turn the fabric I make sure the needle is down I pull up the dog feet I manipulate the fabric so that I'm sewing along the lines I wanted my stitch line I drop the dog feet and then I continue sewing I get to the point I want I make sure my needle is, up, is is in the fabric lift up the dog feed manipulate the fabric along the stitch line drop the dog feed and continue sewing I get to the point where I want to turn the corner make sure the needle is all the way down take the dog feed up manipulate the fabric drop the dog feed I get to the place where I want to turn a corner, drop the needle into the fabric, lift up the dog feed, manipulate the fabric, drop the dog feed, and sew. And when I finish and I get to the end of the fabric, I make sure the needle is up this time. Take the dog feed up and just pull my fabric. And when I've pulled my fabric, I snip off the thread towards the fabric so that I have a long tail at the back of my machine now for the third um, practice we're going to sew along a curve this is a curve we're going to sew along a curve I have used the tailor's chuck I have used the tailor's chuck to draw a curve on this fabric um, and I'm going to sew along that curve. So what I do is I make sure my thread is at the back of the fab of the sewing machine. I place my fabric on the machine. I lower my needle into just making sure the thread doesn't go into the machine. I lower my thread, my needle into the fabric. I drop the dog feed. I switch on my machine, and then I start sewing along the curved line but I have to do it gently so that I sew along the curved lines When I get to the end of my stitches, 
I make sure the needle is all the way up by turning the wheel balance, lift up the dog feet and pull out my fabric and then snip off the thread attaching. And as you can to, see, um, as you can see, we have the straight stitches done. We have the straight and the pivot we've turned at the corners. Yes, good. And we have we have the curve here. This is the curved one. We have the curved drawn. We've done all these stitches drawn with the straight line. So with this basic um, skills, you're beginning to build up your sewing skills. Thank you. I hope this video was informative.